Hi everyone, it's Tom, WA2IVD. Here we are at video number 40 in the A to Z series, and I realized that we haven't covered one of the most useful functions of the 7300, and that's the internal automatic antenna tuner. So let's have a look. Let's take a look at the internal automatic tuner function on the 7300. This function is actually pretty easy to use. You've got the tuner button on the front of the radio, and there's only a few menu settings for it in the normal mode. So let's take a look at those. If you press menu, you're going to press the set touch screen function. And then we're going to go to function, and I've got tuner up here. You can see it's on page three. So if you go down to the third page, you have tuner. And then in the tuner menu, we have tuner switch, push to talk, start, and then there's a preset memory clear. And some of these functions are a, a little bit less obvious, even after you've read through the manual a couple of times. Tuner switch auto means that it will remember the tuner status or the tuner switch status from one band to another. And it'll remember the difference or the tuner setting difference on each band as to whether you have the tuner on or off. So I'll demonstrate that here first. We're going to leave it in auto right now. And I'm going to go back out. And you can see I'm on 40 meters here, and there's a QSO party going on right now. And you can hear uh, hear that on, but we really don't need to listen to the to the rig for most of this demonstration. So I'm going to turn the volume down, and I'm going to tune up here, way to the top of the band where it's clear. And you notice it says tune up here right now, and if I just press briefly the tuner button the tune indicator turns off. So the automatic tuner is bypassed right now. It's not in the circuit. The rig is just going straight out the connector to the antenna. So you could have an external tuner or a manual tuner or something like that. If I turn the tuner back on, it's showing that the tuner is in the circuit. So I'm going to leave it in the circuit and then we're going to change bands. And I'm just going to go up here to 12 meters just because it's pretty dead today. And on 12 meters, you'll notice the tune indicator is on on 12 meters right now as well. I'm going to turn that one off. So we'll turn tune off. It's off on 12 meters. And if I go back to 40 meters, you'll see that tune is on. And you may or may not be able to hear this. I hope this audio comes through. You can actually hear the relays in the rig click to take the tuner in and out of the circuit. So um, hopefully you'll hear this if I go back. I'm going to go back up to 12 meters and the tuner should be off. And you probably heard a relay click. So that's really all the auto manual means is that when it's in auto mode it automatically remembers as you switch from band to band what the status of the tuner was on each band. So let's take a look at the difference now. If I go into menu, touch set, we go to function, and we go to tuner, and I'm going to go into the manual auto, and I'm going to set it to manual. So now it does not remember the settings from band to band. It basically just leaves them wherever you are, whatever you have it set for, regardless of what band you go to. So again, we're on 12 meters, the tuner is off. Now, if I switch to 40 meters, the tuner is still off. So if I turn the tuner on and it shows that it's tuned, and that's because I tuned it up here before I started recording. And now if I switch bands and I go back up to 12 meters, the tuner stays engaged. So it remembers the status, uh, but not from band to band. It just keeps the tuner at whatever the state that it is. So if I switch pretty much to any band here, it's going to show that the tuner is in the circuit. 
So that's really all auto manual does is in manual, it does not remember the state as you switch bands. So you need to manually turn the tuner on or off depending on which one you want. The other menu function, and we'll take a look at that here, is tuner and it's push to talk start. So the default setting for this is off. And what that means is that if I press the push to talk button on the microphone, and let me, you know what, we're going to go up to 12 meters to do this because I want to make sure I'm not bothering anybody and there's no contesting on 12 meters and it's pretty much dead today anyway. So WA2IVD testing. So when I press push to talk, and let me disengage the tuner, and I'm going to press and hold the tuner button to force it to tune. And you saw the display briefly blink, and it's now showing still tuned, so it was able to tune up. WA2IVD testing. So if I switch to a different band, let's go up to 10 meters. And we'll just go down here. WA2IVD testing. When I press the microphone key, it does not attempt to tune the radio. If I press and hold the tuner, it will try to tune it up. WA2IVD testing. So the microphone doesn't cause it to automatically tune. Let's go back to the menu. Set function, tuner, and if I set push to start to on, now let me switch frequencies so that it thinks it needs to retune. And if I press the microphone button now, nothing happens. It's going to make a liar out of me. It may be that it was already tuned. Let's try, well, let's do this. We'll go back to uh, 12 meters. There you go. WA2IVD testing. It didn't really need to... I didn't move frequency far enough. WA2IVD testing. So, if I go back up to 10 meters, I've now changed frequencies far enough that it'll need to retune. When I press the button, it will automatically retune. WA2IVD testing. So that's the push to talk on and off. Now, the other function that was on the settings menu, if we go back in here to function, there is preset memory clear. The tuner in the 7300, just like many of the external auto tuners, will remember the tune settings for up to, I believe the manual says, 100 frequencies. So it will actually look at what frequency you're on and it will adjust the tuner uh, based on what the memory settings are. And let me demonstrate that. Again, hopefully you'll be able to hear this. I'm going to turn the volume down so you won't uh, hear the audio from the rig, but hopefully you'll be able to hear the relays clicking here. As I tune, and let me just move the mic a little bit over closer to the radio, as I tune across the band on 40 meters, you'll hear some relays clicking, which is the tuner changing settings as I get to different areas where it remembered different settings. There was one. There's another. So it's moving the tuner settings as I'm tuning based on the memorized settings. So if I turn the tuner off and I turn a tune across those same frequencies, There's no more relays clicking as I'm moving across there. So the tuner is actually quite intelligent, and since it knows the frequency you're tuned to without having to see any RF, on an external tuner, they'll remember the frequencies as well, but you have to actually key the rig before they know what frequency you're on. Since this is internal to the 7300, it knows what frequency you're on because of the dial. So there it just clicked. 
and again it just clicked so it can remember the tuning settings across the entire band or across multiple bands so again we'll go back in and look at the memory setting uh, I'm sorry the tuner settings and if I clear this and I'm not going to clear it right now but this is the uh, prompt that you get it warns you to make sure you really want to clear them I'm going to say no so for example if you just took the rig from your normal base station and you took it to a portable operation or you just connected it to a different antenna you would probably want to go clear those settings to cause the tuner to do a full retune every time you change frequencies so those are the three settings that you have under normal mode there's one more setting which is emergency mode and we'll talk about that in a little bit let's take a little bit more look at the operation of the tuner all right we've looked at the settings for the tuner now let's take a look at the tuner operation tuner operation is actually pretty simple you saw this a little bit as we were doing the settings you have off and on if you press the tuner button briefly if you press and hold it WA2IVD testing it will flash the transmit and tune lights briefly while it tunes and then it will try to tune up it's daytime here so there's really nothing much going on on 80 meters except for all this electronic noise that I happen to have in my neighborhood here WA2IVD testing and you notice that it tuned as I keyed the mic because I still have the push to talk tune turned on and we'll go to one more frequency here and again you saw the lights or the indicators flash WA2 IVD testing as it was tuning now this is what happens when it can tune the antenna if the range of the antenna or the SWR of the antenna is outside the range of the tuner it will key the rig very briefly and if it's too high in SWR it will not even try to tune and I can demonstrate that because my EdenFed antenna that I happen to have does not work at all um, on 20 meters or without with at least it doesn't work with this internal tuner it works fine with an external tuner but it need it's a uh, not quite below 3 to 1 so we're up at the top of the band here let's just make sure there's nobody around and I'm going to try to get it to tune here and there you notice it keyed very briefly but the tune indicator is not on and I'll, we'll try it again and interestingly in the manual it tells you that if the rig does not successfully tune to try several times WA2IVD but I think that's if it attempts to tune where you hear the relays chattering as it's trying to tune and then it's unable in this case if it's too far out of range it just simply won't even try so that's your indication if you and if you do press and hold tuner and the tune indicator is not on in the upper left then it was not able to successfully tune the antenna so that's really about it for normal operation now there is one other feature of the tuner and that is that it will tune beyond a 3 to 1 SWR in what ICOM calls emergency mode and in emergency mode if you uh, if you use that mode it limits the rig to 50 watts so presumably that's for exactly what it sounds like if you were conducting emergency operations portable somewhere you didn't have anything but your IC 7300 no external tuner you didn't have a a very good antenna you could put it in emergency mode so that you could still at least get some communications out so let's take a look at how we put it into emergency mode we're gonna press menu and we're gonna go to set and the emergency mode function is not it's not under function and it's not under the tuner menu it's under others which is the last item under the set menu and at the very bottom of the screen here it says emergency so if we press that the only option is tuner and if we touch that it says this expands the matching range 
gives you the information that I just told you. Make sure you really want to do that. Press OK. And then you need to press this restart to set, which will power down the rig and power it back up. So it just restarted the rig. You saw the little display that says emergency tuner mode. And so you don't forget that you're in emergency tuner mode. You'll see this little E where the tune indicator is up on the top with a kind of an orange uh, background to let you know that the tuner is in emergency mode. And I'm not even sure if it's going to tune this antenna in emergency mode, but let's give it a try. Again, just make sure there's nobody on there. So we'll try tuning it. And there we go. It was able to tune, and it says E-Tune, so you know it tuned up. It took it a few seconds to get there, but it was able to tune it, and I'm in emergency mode, so if I try to set the power up, I think, I don't know if it'll actually stop it on the display. Now, it lets me turn it all the way up to 100%, but it internally limits it to 50 watts. So that's really all there is to the emergency tuner mode. Everything else operates exactly the same way. It just expands your range and limits your power. And then to get it back out of emergency mode, you go back into the set menu, you go down here to the last choice to others, emergency, and then you just touch that to remove the check mark. And then again, you need to restart the radio. And this time the emergency tuner mode banner doesn't come up and you don't have the little orange display. That's pretty much it for the internal antenna tuner operation. Well, there you have it. The built-in tuner is very handy even though it's limited to a 3 to 1 SWR in normal mode. After a few tweaks to my antenna setup, it will tune my end-fed antenna on almost all the bands I want to work. Right now I just need an external tuner for 20 meters. Speaking of external tuners, next time we'll take a look at setting up and using an external tuner that is specifically made for ICOM rigs. I hope you found this useful. If you did, I would appreciate a click on that like button. Please leave a comment if you have any suggestions, corrections, or other thoughts. If you find my channel useful, please consider clicking on the subscribe button, and once you do that, you can click on the little bell icon if you want to be notified when new videos come out. As always, thanks for watching. I'm Tom, WA2IVD, and this is Ham Cured Smoke.